glowflies and rabid beetles, everyone. Practically one in the same, yet oh so very different to tame. Well, not really actually, but we'll get to that. For now, you might think that it's only the latter that are worth talking about, but I highly disagree. Glowflies themselves might just be one of the most important mobs in all of Don't Starve Hamlet, and I'm here to tell you why. From advantageous spawning mechanics to the quote-unquote infinite farms that come with that, let's talk insects, yes? Yes, and these bioluminescent bugs are essentially the butterflies of Don't Starve Hamlet in a sense, as they spawn from many of the many exotic flowers dotted about. The game only does so though, when a player is on screen. So sometimes some flowers are just going to be doing diddly squat, as the game kind of picks and chooses which flowers glowflies will come from. And make note here too, glowflies only survive if they too are on screen. So this means that you will see lots of flies all the bloody time almost everywhere as not only do exotic flowers spawn in almost every biome in Don't Starve Hamlets, the process of actually entering and leaving the screen for both them and the player will just quote-unquote recycle glowfly spawns over and over and over again if you really want to think about it like that. In short, glowfly numbers are not an issue. And if you want to, you could even just do the single flower trick to focus their spawns as well. Kind of like how we do with butterflies in many of the other Don't Starve games. It might not work all the same as it does with butterflies, but trust me, that's just because it's not exactly the right time for glowfly spawns. For you see, it's come roughly two days before the end of temperate season that the spawning mechanics of glowflies go into absolute overdrive, and suddenly you'll be surrounded by them anywhere you go. So, if you've concentrated their spawn to a single flower, as I've said, you'll just have more control over your handling and murdering of them. Now, you only have a day or so to actually take advantage of that, so make notes. And oh yeah, do not waste your time just standing near exotic flowers for super easy kills, as exotic flowers will not be spawning glowflies when we're nearby. But at the end of the day, the choice is yours. Murder them outright, or murder them through your inventories. Now you can do both at any time. However, doing so at the right time just makes things more efficient, if you know what I mean. Glowflies have a 10% chance to drop a single light bulb upon death. And each glowfly actually counts towards one point of naughtiness in the game's mind. So if you kill enough in quick succession, who knows, you might get a visit from Krampus on occasion. Is it the best Krampus farm out there? No. But it is Hamlet, so our options are limited. All that said, I think I still got a better option for ya. That being the bug nets. Not only is capturing glowflies within them unique in the sense that glowflies don't actually spoil over time within our inventories as you can see, murdering them from within our inventories actually results in a light bulb 100% of the time. Yeah, it's a problem that they don't stack of course, but deal with that, as light bulbs are kind of too good to pass up in Hamlets, especially guaranteed ones like this. But folks, it gets so much better than that. Combine everything that we have just talked about with some bug be gone here, and that quote unquote infinite light bulb farm that I mentioned becomes a reality. A single exotic flower near the end of temperate season, plus the noxious cloud of a bug be gone, equals just insane amounts of glowfly death and thus light bulbs. Be mindful though, keep your distance to help maximize the efficiency, and note that these light bulbs will be dropping at half their freshness. Still, I think it's gonna be worth it, especially for how dang easy it is to do. But again, we've only got a day or so to actually do any of this, as glowflies have a life cycle, and come the end of temperate season, said cycle reaches its cocoon stage. About a day or so before the start of humid season, mind you, all glowflies on screen will suddenly become glowfly cocoons, and they will stay this way for about another day. Well, unless we kill them, of course, because we can't actually do that if we choose to. However, I've also noticed that these guys typically despawn off screen too, but don't hold me to that. Hamlet's kind of weird at times. Cocoons, though, will also offer us a 10% chance at a light bulb. But with this, everyone, our time with Glowflies is over. So then, rabbit beetle time. And do you see these things? Yeah. They're called Great Leafy Stalks, and the deep rainforests of Hamlet are chock full of them. 
They're important to mention in this guide, because while exotic flowers and thus glowflies can exist in rainforests, it's not like we as players are just always going to be in them, so the game has its own cheeky way to force the spawning of cocoons even when we're not on screen. And yup, you guessed it, it's these stalks that help them do it. Come humid season, that is. And in case you haven't guessed it for some reason, these cocoons are what house our next insect friends. And you will be encountering a lot of them come this season. And that's not even the worst part of dealing with rabbit beetles, honestly. To me, the most annoying thing is how far away we can be from the inactive cocoons and yet still have them become freaking aggroed on us. It's like the only constraint is that the cocoons have to be loaded on screen at least for a second and suddenly you're getting just honed in on by a horde of bearded bugs. As yes, rabbit beetles do seem to always try and roam towards our last known location. So it's incredibly difficult to actually lose these things at times. Now we'll talk about aggro more here in a minute, but I'm just going to throw in this fact that the swashy hat dropped by masked pigs can, well, throw off rabbit beetles at times. And heck, if we couple this with these super rare times when the beetles are not aggroed onto something, you might even see them sleeping on occasion. That is come dusk and night, they're always active during the day. But yes, since rabbit beetles are bloody hostile to everything, expect to see a lot of this going on in your rainforests. And don't be shy about running groups of them into snap toots and such, if need be. Well, if you can see that is. Because if hordes of hostile bugs weren't even enough, you have to remember that we're in humid season here. Therefore, the fog is inevitably coming. You're gonna have to handle both plenty of times. You need to be prepared. And the best way you could do so is through carrying Bug Be Gone in your back pocket once again. The Noxious Cloud insta-kills rabbit beetles just as it does glow flies, so even huge hordes are just going to diminish in seconds. And by the way, huge hordes like this are not an exaggeration just for this video. This here is actually a super common occurrence come this season. So I say again. Be prepared. But if Bug Be Gone is out of your reach for whatever reason, you'll be happy to know that you got a second option. Traps. Now basic traps don't actually kill rabbit beetles, but there is a reason for wanting to do things this way over the Bug Be Gone. For you see, like glowflies, rabbit beetles can survive in our inventories forever. And choosing to murder them like this will result in a light bulb 100% of the time as the glowflies offered, but chitin 60% of the time. Now that's important, because killing them any other way only offers us a 10% chance at light bulbs and a 20% chance at chitin. So make notes. But oh yeah, what is this chitin actually good for, Beard? Well, one could trade some to the collector pig indefinitely for three oinks each, which is actually really nice. Five chitin goes into making both the matte mask and matte suit here, which when combined will render mats completely non-hostile to us, which is also nice. And finally, a cup of chitin also makes a weevil mantle, in which will serve as an armor boasting 900 durability, which is up there, offering 60% protection, which is gonna down there, but will still be an armor preventing the slowdown of the fog of humid season, so that is, again, very nice. But a few last notes here on both of these insects. Many mobs will attack low flies on sight as they fly about, so perhaps nature is going to do your job for you on occasion. While no glowflies will spawn in humid season, obviously, they will return come lush, so make notes. No, we can't plant glowflies to make new exotic flowers in case you are wondering that. And no, we are not safe from rabbit beetles from walking into the poison rainforest, and heck, you're likely just gonna run into more cocoons in this biome regardless, so that's freaking fun. Rabbit beetles will eat any meat item on the ground near them, however they will prioritize attacking anything over eating, so don't think too much about this prospect. And finally, rabbit beetles also have a whopping 2% chance to spawn from smashing pots down here in the ancient pig ruins, so be on your toes. But there you have it everyone, a guide on both glowflies and rabbit beetles within Don't Starve Hamlet here. And I bet in many of you thought that they would be simple, small, insignificant, and that the guide would be short because of that, huh? Oh no. These bugs have some intriguing mechanics to them, and I am happy to have shared them. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, don't forget your bug spray, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye bye.